In a remote mountain village in the highlands, a doctor went to the mountains to collect medicine when he came across a wolf in difficult delivery. The doctor delivered the baby and gave all the food to the wolf. It was this act that changed the doctor's life. What really happened? What did this doctor experience? One morning, a middle-aged man carrying a basket went up the mountain to collect medicine. He was the village doctor, and the villagers all affectionately called him Mike, who was not only helpful but also often rescued some animals. At that time, whether the villagers or livestock were sick, Mike would help them to heal. One day, a villager came to Mike and told him that his mother was sick, and when Mike heard the news, he immediately picked up the medicine box and went to the villager's house. After arriving at the villager's home, and after a patient consultation, the villager's mother gradually recovered. When Mike was returning home, he suddenly heard the sound of animals not far from him, which attracted his attention, so he stopped to see what was happening. Just after he took a few steps, he suddenly saw a pair of deep eyes, so he was startled and didn't know what to do. Just as he was still thinking about what to do with the wolf, he heard a delicate cry, so he guessed that the wolf might be giving birth to its pups. Since Mike was kind and the wolf was weak, he slowly approached it. The wolf's belly was bulging and it was carrying to newborn pups, so Mike guessed that there were still pups to be born. Based on his years of experience, Mike stopped being afraid and tried to stroke the wolf's belly. At that time, the wolf was so exhausted and weak from giving birth to the pups that it stopped being hostile to Mike when it sensed that he had no intention to harm them. Knowing that there were still pups unborn, Mike felt worried and decided to help it. Afterwards, the pups were born successfully and were all healthy. Since it had just given birth, the wolf did not have the strength to go out to hunt for food. Even if it could go out to hunt, the pups would probably be hurt by other animals. Thinking of this, Mike took out the dried meat and dry food in his bag and gave them to the wolf. Looking at the dried meat and dried food, the wolf became wary and lowered its head to sniff before it started to eat, which made Mike feel relieved. It was getting dark and the wolf and the pups were safe, so Mike planned to go home. After that, Mike would go up the mountain every few days, with food to secretly feed the wolf, and watch the pups eat their milk. As time went by, the pups grew up. After a few years, the wolf cubs were all grown up. One day, when the weather was cool, and the breeze blew gently, Mike pushed open the door and saw two hairs on the ground with dried blood on them. Mike was surprised and wondered what was going on so he looked toward the door, but he didn't see anything. He thought that one of the villagers might have given him to hares as a result of a good harvest, so he didn't care. Strangely enough, a few days later, Mike saw not only hares, but also pheasants and wild pigs at his doorstep, and Mike felt that something was wrong, and was sure that those were not given to him, secretly by the villagers. While he was eating, he deliberately peeled open the hare's wound and found that it was made by other animals. By then, the hare still had wounds on its body that looked like wolf bites, so Mike knew what had happened. Despite this, he still felt shocked and couldn't understand why those wolves didn't eat the food but brought it to him. In those days, whenever Mike opened the door, he would see the prey. One day, Mike woke up very early and stared at the door through the window. Not long after, a sound came from not far away. Mike slowly walked to the door and opened it, then saw six Snow White Wolves with food in their mouths, which made Mike feel scared and immediately closed the door. However, he felt that the wolf leader seemed a little familiar, so he opened the door again, just in time to see those wolves with food in their mouths on the door which brought tears to Mike's eyes. It was then that he realized that all those praise were sent by the wolf and its children. It didn't expect that his 
one kind act could make those wolves share their food with him. Perhaps those wolves could survive independently at that time, so they repaid him in this way. For a long time after that, those wolves did not appear. During those days, it was raining all the time. Due to the impact of strong rainfall, the mountain near the village where Mike lived was loosened, and Mike was still asleep at that time. It is well known that animal doors are very perceptive to natural disasters. That night, Mike heard a strange sound at the door. After being woken up, Mike got to check and pushed open the door to see the wolf he had saved before. The wolf made Mike feel very close. The wolf approached Mike, looking very anxious, and seemed to want to say something to Mike. As it could not speak, it could only bite Mike's pants and pull him out anxiously, and Mike did not know what the wolf wanted. Although Mike could not understand the wolf's behavior, he still followed the wolf. The wolf sensed that Mike was following it, so it didn't drag him again, and Mike thought something must have happened. After that, they reached the halfway point of the mountain. It was then that Mike saw the mountain near his village start to crumble, the earth rose and a big crack appeared, and then a mudslide happened. Then the cracks spread, the rocks cracked or were crushed, water poured through the windows into the house, and the house collapsed. At that time, the water suddenly became bigger, and was mixed with many firewood and branches, so the river became very muddy. In the distance, there was still a roar in the gorge and the ground was shaking. Mike looked at the village he had lived in before, which was about to turn into ruins, and he felt afraid that if the wolf hadn't woken him up, and brought him up the mountain, he might have been dead. However, he regretted not rescuing the villagers. The wolf probably knew what Mike was thinking, so it rubbed Mike's leg, as if to comfort him, in this way. Mike squatted down and stroked the wolf's head, instantly shedding tears and expressing his gratitude to it. He said if the wolf hadn't saved him, maybe he would have died. The wolf seemed to understand Mike's words, and after tilting its head and barking a few times, it turned around and left. Mike not only helped the wolf give birth to its pups, but also fed it to regain its strength and raise the pups, while the wolf and the grown-up pups gave Mike prey, and even helped him escape from natural disasters. Whether it's for Mike or these wolves, the bond between them was precious and crossed race, so true friendship requires dedication from both sides. If we meet wolves in our lives, we not only can't hurt them, but we have to stay away from them, because we don't have a connection with them. Animals are our friends and are closely related to our lives. Animals are equal to human beings and also have precious life, which is an important part of nature. With the increasing material needs of humans, many animals are facing extinction, and therefore their survival has become very poor. We need to respect and protect animals. To protect animals and their diversity is to protect humans, and the environment on which they depend. Animals need to survive as much as humans do, so we should not destroy their habitats, but treat them like friends. We should not hurt animals, but rather take care of them. I hope we can get in touch with nature more often, and understand and accompany animals. That's today's story. Click subscribe for more interesting stories.